So uh, again, I'm Nathan. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I have been a freelance web developer since 1995. Yes, that is correct. 1995, back when we used a tool called Hot Dog to code HTML. Anybody remember that from Sausage Software? Uh, yeah. And then we got really cool with Netscape Navigator 2.0 that had the visual editor built in. Oh boy, yeah. So it's been a while. Uh, I've been an iThemes training instructor for several years now, and uh, I'm also a business coach for freelancers. I love working with freelancers, helping them up their game in their web businesses. So I always start out a talk like this with this slide. I'm not an expert. I'm a learner. Uh, there are things I'm still learning. There are processes I'm still improving. Uh, anybody who, poses them, who, who positions themselves as an expert, I'm naturally skeptical of because we all have something to learn, right? Uh, so hopefully you can learn from some of the things that I've done wrong over the years and save yourself that heartache and those mistakes. So uh, here's where we're headed today. <clears throat> we're talking about recurring income. We're going to see why recurring income is critical to a freelance business. And then we're going to go into a, a talk about how to create recurring income. And I'm going to give you some tools that I think are really helpful in um, thinking through your strategy of creating services for your clients. And last of all, just kind of a vision at the end of the difference that having good, steady, recurring income can make. So that's where we're headed. Hopefully we'll finish up you know, with about 10, 5, 10 minutes left for some quick Q&A at the end, and uh, we'll go from there. So why is recurring income critical to a freelance web business? So let's just ask, how many of you guys are freelance web developers? That's you. You live in that world. You're working with clients. You're trying to make ends meet. How many of you, um, finances are not an issue at all? <laughs> yeah, so here's why recurring income is critical. How many of you feel like this when you're looking at your freelance finances? No. Maybe you're okay on this step, but the next step, whoa, we might go off the end, it might be it, the world's going to end, you know. Uh, this is very typical for freelancers to find themselves in a situation where, you know, the next step, boy, the next month, I'm great this month. But next month or maybe two months from now, I don't know where the next job's coming from. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get the bills paid. It's this scenario why recurring income is absolutely critical uh, in the life of a freelancer. And let's say you do, you do awesome this year and you knock it out and you make six figures in your freelance business. Well, guess what happens on January 1 of next year? You start over again. That sucks. <laughs> Doesn't it? Okay. So recurring income helps to deliver you from this cycle of starting at zero again every January. So a long time ago, one of my mentors asked me this question, <clears throat> and he was sort of a serial entrepreneur. He was a computer guy, IT specialist, and he asked me, okay, Nathan, is one dollar more valuable than another? What do you think? I need two volunteers. I'm going to pick. I'm going to go front row. Melanie, pick a dollar. Okay, you get a second dollar. Okay, now. Oh, two Melanies. Okay, now, these two ladies just got a dollar, right? Any difference in these, this money? Does it spend the same? Okay, now, here's what they didn't know. The dollar that this Melanie selected also comes with, next month, another dollar. And the next month, another dollar. And the next month, another dollar. She's putting them away. <laughs> See, this is, this is the person that understands the open source license, right? <laughs> share and share alike, right? Okay. So is there a difference in these dollars after all? Yeah, she's still not wanting to give back. She knows how this works. Uh, is there a difference in these dollars? One dollar is followed by a series of other dollars. Now, what if instead of a dollar, that was a hundred dollars? or $500. And it didn't just happen once, but it happened every month of the year. So all of a sudden, you didn't just make $500 that first month, you made $6,000 over the year. That's the value of recurring income. See, the more predictable a dollar is, the more valuable it becomes. Does that make sense? One dollar <clears throat> is not as valuable as another dollar. If one dollar is more predictable than another dollar, that dollar has immensely more value. And here's the beauty of it all. When you're talking about freelance web development, we all live with this underlying current of stress over finances. It's just part of the game. Less risk means less stress. 
So when you build your business based on recurring revenue, and you start to see that recurring revenue build, much less risk every month, much less stress, which is why I come to the point of this whole talk, which is recurring income is the foundation of a successful freelance web development business. You've got to have it. Otherwise, you're walking a tightrope, and every step might be your last. You've got to have that underlying safety net of recurring income. Does that make sense? All right, let's look at two businesses. How many of you recognize those two logos? <laughs> How many of you remember going to Blockbuster Video and renting the VCR tapes? And yeah, okay. So those of us geezers remember that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what's the difference in these two business models? Blockbuster is based on repeat customers. Going to Blockbuster, have a great experience, come back the next week, 250, you get another movie, right? That does go back a ways, 250. <laughs> Uh, I was doing a talk for a group of uh, kids a couple years ago, and I quoted the lyrics to I Can't Get No Satisfaction. I asked them who sang it. In unison, they said Britney Spears. I kid you not. <laughs> it was that day I realized I was old. Uh, so, yeah, Blockbuster is based on repeat customers. Netflix, based on recurring revenue. Where are these two companies today? Dead and growing, right? Now, how does that apply to your freelance business? Are you simply basing your doesn't show up. Are you simply basing your business on repeat customers? Or are you basing your business on a recurring revenue model? Because sooner or later, if you're only focused on repeat customers, and we all, by the way, repeat customers are great, and that's a great place to start. But you've got to have recurring revenue if you're going to survive, especially as an independent freelancer. With recurring income, you get a more consistent revenue stream. You have a more predictable workload. And as a result of that, you can spend more time working and not selling. Who enjoys selling? Anybody? There are a few superheroes among us that enjoy these things. Talk to them, you know, rub some of their sweat off. Maybe it'll make you a better seller, you know, like they did the gladiators. And they, you know, anyway. Uh, the rest of us mere mortals struggle with selling, right? Recurring income lets you spend more time focusing on what you enjoy. Plus, it lets you maintain additional, uh, maintain relationships for additional work and referrals. How many of you have realized in your businesses that it's a lot easier to sell an existing customer on a new product than it is to find a brand new customer? So recurring revenue keeps you in the conversation with that customer. Okay, so let's talk about how to create recurring income. And I want to give you a couple of tools in a minute, but here's the idea. You're, you need to create a suite of ongoing services to bundle with your core product. What's your core product? Website, Website right? WordPress. We love WordPress. WordPress is, oh, actually, you're the product, right? You're selling yourself and your expertise. But you're building a website. That's the core. So bundling with that a suite of supplementary services that are ongoing in nature. It starts off like this. I'm going to give you guys all these slides at the end. So if you're frantically scribbling, just hang tight. Uh, three questions. What is it that my customers really need? What services can I create to meet those needs? And then what resources do I need to perform those services? If you can answer those three questions well, you can create all kinds of valuable, useful services for your clients. What do they need? What can I do to meet the need? What do I need to do to get things together to meet that need? Okay? Now, I work with uh, a group called iThemes. We met Backup Buddy and some other products. Um, uh, Backup Buddy is one of the sponsors of the WordCamp today. Sponsors are awesome, by the way. Make sure you thank those folks that are hanging out down there at the tables. Uh, iThemes is built to empower freelancers like ourselves to do what we do. Uh, there's a, they have a whole suite of... Um, software to do those things. I think Sync that helps you manage uh, lots of websites. There's Backup Buddy to do backups and migration. There's I think Stash, which is cloud storage. There's I think Security to keep things safe. I think is built to empower freelancers. Uh, I am a contractor with I think. I'm not a full-time employee. I'm a freelancer that started using them as a customer. And I've built my business around these, uh, these software packages. Now, 
Uh, if you are interested in those things, there's a coupon code, WCATL, 35% off anything I think sells. I'll put that up again at the end. Even if you don't do I things, there's tons of stuff out there that will empower us as WordPress freelancers to do these sorts of packages. So whether you maybe use Managed WP, maybe you bring in Securi as your security partner. There's all kinds of services out there that are built for us as freelancers to package together and help our clients succeed. Now the question is, how do I do that? How do I put together good packages that meet my client needs? And the first thing I tell people, uh, especially in a coaching situation where people are trying to figure out, you know, how do I take my business to the next level? How do I start to build recurring revenue? I always tell them this. I, I say, start by thinking telescopically. And I think the bread and butter of every freelance web developer's recurring income needs to be a website hosting and maintenance package. Now we got a, a guy here from Liquid Web. Uh, Liquid Web is my web hosting partner. Love those guys. They got a table downstairs. Make sure you go say hi to AJ. Liquid Web is fantastic. Best web host I've used since 1995. No kidding. The support is that great. Um, hosting and maintenance has got to be the bread and butter. And so I say think telescopically. Start out with hosting as a first tier. Add a second tier that includes backups and updates. That also includes web hosting. See, they build on top of each other. And then add a package that includes security. So you have a good, better, best package. Hosting on a great host. We're going to add on top of that a second level that does backups and updates for WordPress. Then we add a third level of security where we're going to bring in security firewall maybe, I think security, whatever packages you want to add on to that. Good, better, best. Now in the marketing, in a marketing strategy, which one are they going to tend to pick? <laughs> one in the middle, right? They tend to always follow, uh, put one in the middle. So that's where you bundle your core and you kind of break it out. One a little less, one a little more, still all have value. Thinking telescopically, does that make sense? Start with one, build on some more, add another. Move to another kind of package. Maybe you're looking at a social media service. Start out with some social media training, either one time or ongoing, just to empower people to do it themselves who want to do it themselves. Maybe add on top of that, well, I don't want to do it myself, so you can build my Facebook page and make it look great and do all the things that need to be done to make it work. And maybe a third level on top of that, a premium level, where you're actually helping them provide content for their social media properties. Good, better, best, telescopically. Does that make sense? Here's another idea. SEO. Start out with some basic, basic SEO training. Add on to that website optimization. Add on top of that ongoing content creation. Good, better, best. Now you may look at these things and say, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> okay, I can use Facebook, but I don't know how to do, you know, maybe I'm not going to be great at doing training. Maybe I'm not going to do great at ongoing content. Maybe I don't know SEO, but you know people who know SEO, right? So that, that's the resource. Who, who can I gather around me to do the things I don't do, but I can still sell to make a profit? <coughs> gather those resources together. That's why these work camps are so great. I hope you guys have taken time to interact with people and mingle and have lunch with people, ask questions over the time of this word camp. Because you know, the world is big enough for all of us to have a good business. And when we work together, we go farther, right? If you want to go fast, go alone, the old African proverb says. If you want to go long or go far, you go together. So you bring around yourself people who have compatible skill sets to offer these services to your customers. Now, here's, here's where we're going to get interesting. Two tools. So you can go now to brilliantly.net slash worksheets. That's just to forward out to a Dropbox link that will give you a PDF. So if you've got your computer open, you want to do that, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm going to have them up here on the screen. Uh, these worksheets will help you think through the process of what services to offer your recurring income clients. Brilliantly.net slash worksheets. It's a six page PDF. So let me show you what, what it looks like. All right, here's the first, which I've called the advanced services generator, which I can't seem to find on the, ah, there it is. There we go. Okay, so advanced services generator, there's really nothing to this. Advanced, by the way, is the name of the coaching service I offer to freelance web developers. It's a free tool for you guys. It's basically a brainstorming canvas. So it's just a grid, but it asks some very important questions. 
Here's what I encourage you to do. Print this thing off. Turn off your computer after it prints out. <laughs> Go to a coffee shop, your back deck, some place where you can completely unplug and just think. All right? Whatever environment stimulates you, get out in front of the screen, go there and just think about the qu answers to these questions, okay? Here's where it starts out. All right, identify a customer segment. What work do they do? What gains do they have? What pains and solutions? The second page gives you some instructions. All right, so who is the customer? Can you guys see that or do I need to make it bigger? Okay, who is the customer? What kind of customer are we working with? What kind of work is this customer trying to accomplish? What would the customer gain if this work was done effectively? What pains does the customer have while trying to accomplish this work? And then how can you address the customer's pains so the gains are realized? All right, so there's the instructions. That's page two. Page three gives you an example. All right, so let's identify a customer segment. Small business, all right? What does, our small, what, do, what does a small business client need to do? Well, we need to keep WordPress and plugins up to date. So we're starting now to talk about what I say is the bread and butter of every freelance web developer's um, recurring income, hosting and maintenance. Hosting and maintenance. Small businesses need to keep WordPress and the associated plugins up to date, right? What happens if they don't? They get hacked, right? They come in and they got pharmaceutical ads all over their site on Monday morning. That's a bad day for everybody. Um, okay, so that's what they need to do. All right, what happens if that work is accomplished? Well, the site stays secure, right? And it's going to perform better. But what are the pains involved in this? How many of you guys have ever had one of your clients say, I was afraid to push the update button? I didn't know what was going to happen. I thought it was going to break. And, you know, sometimes it does, by the way. So they have a fear of making updates to WordPress. That's the first pain. The second one is forgetting. Fear and forgetting are the two main reasons people don't update their website, in my experience. So forgetting to check if updates are needed. Oh, we hadn't logged into the WordPress site in six months, and there's 58 plugin updates. Not, probably not, but maybe. You know, that many plugin updates, and wow, what are we going to do? And they've completely forgotten. These are the same people who, when, you know, Java wants to update on their computer, they hit ignore, right? And they just forget about it, or Windows wants to make an update. So look what we've got. We've got small businesses who have this need to keep WordPress and the associated plugins up to date, and there's an important gain in it if they do this work. It, the site's going to stay secure and perform optimally, but they're afraid or they forget to do it. So here's an opportunity for us to provide a service. Does that make sense? So we're going to offer managed WordPress update services for client websites. And through whatever tool you use, whether it be iTheme Sync or Infinite WP or one of the others that offer a, you know, a, a, a way where you can update multiple websites at once, you, you create that package to, to fulfill that need. Does that make sense? Let's look at another one. So let's say we want to target nonprofit organizations. Who here works with nonprofits? Love to work with nonprofits. Probably 30% of my business is nonprofit by choice, and I, I enjoy working with nonprofits. So uh, what are, what's the work that a nonprofit needs to do? Well, to get donations and to raise their volunteer base, a nonprofit has to be great at communicating, right? They need to let people know about the work they're doing, what the needs are, so they can connect with the people who have those same, uh, does, you know, that, that they're basically trying to identify with people who have the same concerns as they do. And they're providing an avenue for the average person to more effectively do the work that everybody wants to do, right? So they need, they need to regularly communicate with their current and potential donors and potential volunteers about their work. Now, what would that do? If, if a nonprofit is successfully communicating with their donor base or with their volunteers, what's going to happen? Excitement about the work of the nonprofit, right? People get excited when they hear success stories about this, you know, this lady that was in this bad situation. Our nonprofit took her and helped her get reestablished and, you know, what took her back through, you know, she's now in college and the world is looking great again. Okay? Excitement, increase the donation levels of existing donors, activate new donors. 
because those sort of messages get shared out on social media and people are excited about them. And so the whole message grows as a result of this. Now, for those of you who work with nonprofits, why doesn't this happen as effectively as it should? No staff, no money. What else? One other big thing. <laughs> Listen, all great ideas die in committee. <laughs> and time, right? And that kind of goes with staff. But we got, when I meet with nonprofits, they always say, look, we've got these great ideas. We just don't have the time to pull it off. There's not enough staff to do it. There's not enough money to make it happen. So lack of staff without, uh, without skill or training. <laughs> How about anybody work with the nonprofit with the well-meaning office person who posts to social media? <laughs> well-meaning, good-hearted person who can't spell three words correctly. <laughs> oh, goodness. Or they have the worst picture in the world that they put on social media, you know? It, it's, anyway. Lack of staff with adequate skill or training. Lack of time or keeping the message and brand consistent. What I see a lot of times in nonprofits is there's eight people trying to communicate into a channel and everybody's saying something different, so the message gets mixed, right? Anyway, all that to say, there's our problem, so what do we do? We're gonna offer an email marketing service to plan a message calendar and create emails coordinated with website content so that it works in a, in a circular fashion, email to social to web, and it all works together, right? So this is what you sit down at a coffee shop, on your back deck, wherever, and you start to think about some market segments. What are their gains? What are their pains? What solutions can you provide? Now you can do this, right? You know who you're working with. You know what your customers need. So it's a simple grid. There's nothing magic about this. It just takes some time to focus on. Now how many of you actually actively uh, plan time to work on your business like this instead of just in your business. You understand the distinction between those two things? Most of us are so busy working that we never get time to work on the system that is our business. We're working in our business instead of on our business. So I challenged people in our webinar on this uh, last week to um, take an hour. Look, just knock off an hour early on Friday afternoon or start an hour early the next morning Whatever it takes, just take an hour and get two or three of these lines filled out. And then go on to the second worksheet. The second worksheet is the services planner. Now this is based on a really great tool called the business model generator. Uh, it's a free, it's a Creative Commons license thing, which I've tweaked just a little bit. Uh, here's how it looks. You can print that out, use it as much as you want. Here's the instructions. So we're going to take one of those lines in the brainstorming tool, and we're going to say, all right, what are we going to call this new service? And who is uh, the target for the service? So in this example, in a minute, we're going to do, use this example of the uh, email marketing for nonprofits. All right, a description of the service. What, you know, one line, one sentence description, including uh, what the service includes to which customer segment is it targeted. And you're going to drop right down in here in the middle column, the value propositions. What value does this service bring to the customer segment? Why would customers select our service over competitors? Which of the customer's needs will this help to meet? So you're basically just taking the things you brainstormed in the previous worksheet. What are their pains and what can you do? You're bringing that all together into a value. What value does it bring to the customer segment? Why would they choose us? Which of the customer's needs is this going to address? And once you have this filled up and you've thought through your value propositions, you come over here to key activities. So what activities do I need to do to pull these things off? Well, it's going to do all these great things, but what do I need to do to pull that off? And I'm going <coughs> to list those things down. What tasks do I need to perform to fulfill that? All right, down below. What resources do I need to assemble in order to fulfill these value propositions? I've got to find an SEO person. I've got to find somebody to help me do email. I've got to find... You know, these are all the things we need. What roles do I need to perform? What contractors do I need to hire? What tools do I need to develop? What third-party services are needed? So you put all those things down and then zip over to this last column. What, what's it going to cost me to do this? And don't forget to include your own time there. And last of all, how am I going to price this service for the customer? 
Okay? So you've made a progression. You've gone from a list of, hello, it's not going to go up? Okay, well, a list of all these customer segments and their problems down to your defining <laughs> and filling out this form. Now, let's do an example of this email marketing. Here's how one's fleshed out. And this is in the download, so you can see this later. But uh, we're going to call the name of this service Donor Reach, this email marketing service for nonprofits. And we're going to target small to medium nonprofits. Large nonprofits usually have a division that does this already. But the small and medium ones, and sometimes it's the medium sized nonprofits that struggle the most because they got a lot more going on than the small ones, and they've usually outgrown their infrastructure. Uh, medium nonprofits are a great target for this. So we're going to create an email marketing service for nonprofit organizations that helps them maintain compelling communication with their donor base. Make sense? Let's jump down to value propositions. So nonprofits are understaffed, rarely have the manpower expertise to maintain consistent strategic communications. We said that was true. A value proposition is that, hey, I'm local. They can meet with me face to face and we're going to talk through the message that they want to send. We're going to create and execute a planned message calendar. That's huge for an organization. We're going to create professional copy designed to engage potential donors. We're going to, have a, we're going to coordinate website content that's shareable to social media to supplement the email and provide additional calls to action. And then we're going to do regular reporting. Now, when you've done this, guess what you've just done in this column? Who has trouble selling? What have you done right here? It's your pitch. Now, are you trying to sell the customer something they don't need? No, you're coming in with a great solution to their problem, right? So for those of us mere mortals who struggle with selling, this is a great tool to help you already package. I mean, this is practically writing the email already that you're going to send out to your nonprofits to pitch the service. Okay, so there's the middle column. What am I going to have to have in the key activities? Well, we've got to have a planned strategy meeting uh, with me and a copywriter to assemble the message calendar. We've got to create the email copy. We've got to create uh, supplementary web content, and we've got to have a tracking report. That's what I've got to do to pull this service off, right? Underneath, what resources do I need? Well, I've got to have an email marketing platform, maybe MailChimp, maybe Constant Contact, who knows? I've got to have an account manager. Probably that's going to be me right now. I need a copywriter, because I'm not going to have time to write all that stuff. I've got to have a website manager. Again, probably going to be me right now. I've uh, got to have an analytics and a reporting platform. Okay, so we're starting to pull things together. This becomes a to-do list, a checklist for the things you need to do to make this service work. All right, moving over here. What's, what's going to cost me? Some sort of email platform? Probably going to get the client to sign up for their own account and let the client bear that load. It's going to make pricing easier when the client starts outgrowing the different tiers of different mailing services. So uh, we're going to say, uh, maybe we'll push them toward constant contact because they have nonprofit pricing. It's pretty good pricing for nonprofits. Um, we're going to need a copywriter. Okay, I've got somebody that will do it for $35 an email. Awesome. So I know what that cost is going to be. Uh, eventually, I'm going to need an account manager. Maybe that account manager can be the copywriter. And I'm going to need a website manager also. So I'm starting to think about you know, what the cost structure around this is going to be. And then we start putting some dollar figures on what we're going to make from the client down there in the bottom box. Does that make sense? Now, how many of you guys can take this worksheet and do it? Spend an hour, two hours, do some brainstorming, and then flesh out one idea for a client. Because this becomes your recurring revenue. This is how you do it. Now, hopefully, most of you guys who are freelance web developers, you're doing already hosting and backups and maintenance. It's bread and butter. We all ought to be selling those packages to every single client. That's where the majority of my recurring revenue comes from. It's just, it's an easy sell. But then you start adding on additional services. And these tools will help you think through that. Now, when you've done this, selling gets a lot easier, like I just mentioned. You've already articulated the gains, pains, and solutions. So you leverage your existing client relationships and say, hey, look, we're starting this new thing. I understand how hard it is for you to do X, Y, and Z. Here's what we can do. The price is reasonable. When, you know, let's, let's talk about this. Or do you know anybody else who could benefit from this service? Ask for referrals. That's how your recurring revenue stream will continue to build and build and build. Does that make sense? 
So what's the difference this can make? Here's where I want you to let's broaden our vision just a little bit. Because the ultimate goal for all of us who are freelancers is this. Cover your critical expenses with recurring income. Now that's a, it's a two level, it's a, it, it happens at two levels. Number one, if you're a freelancer, get out of debt as quickly as you can. Seriously. Because the more money that's being sucked out of your account every month by bills is the more money you've got to put into your account from work. And what happens when the stuff going out is less than the stuff coming in? What happens to my stress level? What happens to my wife's stress level? <laughs> my life becomes difficult at that point, right? But what happens when you've got your personal finances in order such that the amount of recurring revenue you're bringing in every month equals or exceeds the bills that you have going out. This is huge. Because now you're not under pressure. Now you don't have to go bang the doors down selling to people. Now you can say no to those terrible clients that otherwise you would have had to have that revenue coming in in order to pay your bills. See, this is what recurring, this is the power of recurring revenue. It can completely transform your freelance business. It can let you do the kind of work you want to do instead of being forced to do the work that you have to do. <coughs> so how would it change your life? What change would that make in your world? Now here's the thing. It doesn't happen quickly. And anybody that says it does is probably trying to sell you one of these services that I'm pitching. <laughs> it takes time. It happens $100 at a time, $200 at a time, $300 at a time. But over time, that adds up, right? Month after month after month. Can you see the spreadsheet in your mind? This month it's 100, next month it's 400, the next month it's 800. You're selling, services are happening. And before you know it, you're making $5,000 a month in recurring income. It takes time, but it does work. I, I'm living it, it does work. <coughs> recurring income is the foundation of a successful freelance web development business. Okay, questions and answers. For questions, I'll try for answers. Who's got questions? Yes, ma'am. Did you guys hear that question? Okay. <laughs> Would you repeat that for the no, I'm just kidding. Okay. So it's a great question. It's a question that probably everybody in this room either currently has or has struggled with, and it's about hosting. Okay. Um, uh, she, what's your name? Teresa. Teresa was saying, all right. Um, I like the. I don't. I have my clients bring their own web hosting. We provide some consultation and what kind of hosts are going to be good and what kind of hosts are going to be bad. Uh, but she wants to have her clients holding the keys. And so how, do you, how does that all work, right? Is that basically the question? Uh, so I take a different approach to that. Uh, I think, and, I, and now let me just say this. The, there is something to be said for that position because then you know, you're pushing all of your support onto the web host. Maybe you're not responsible for the web hosting, and I understand that. Um, I would bring a different perspective to that. And what I would say is this. Partner with a fantastic web host. I partner with Liquid Web. And the reason I do is that at any time of the day or night, I can call and within a minute or so, seriously, I'm on the phone with a Linux certified person uh, that can solve the problem right there. Um, if, you are, if you're not offering your own web hosting service, you're leaving money on the table with your clients. You just are. Uh, when, you know, you can, you can charge, I, I can very easily charge for most of my clients 
$3.99 a year for a simple web hosting package, just hosting, okay? And I have a few clients that still do that, and I, <laughs> I position those payments due in May because that's when our car tags and homeowners association is due. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, it pays all that stuff. But seriously, you, you need to be pushing people into a, a backup and security package. It's maybe $100 a month, $150 a month, and you're providing the hosting, regular backups, security, all, you know, in that, in that whole package, and you become the web person for them. Uh, it's, it's important, I think, to position yourself, and quite, you know, when I'm working with clients, if there's ever a problem with hosting, it's affecting everybody. There's rarely a problem with hosting. So I would rather have all my eggs in one basket, in a sense, than to have to deal with 30 different hosting C panels and all those things. So that when there's a problem, I've got one neck to strangle liquid web, uh, and fortunately, they're really good at it, so. Say again? How much? What's the dollar amount charge? So, all right. Um, I used to do a lot of hosting only packages, and I've stopped doing that because of security issues. Um, I have a couple of clients who are still doing that, but that's usually, it starts at $3.99 a year. Uh, for hosting, backups, and uh, maintenance, WordPress plugin updates, starts at $100 a month. Adding on security starts at $150 a month. Depending on the complexity of the site, if it's an e commerce site, if it's a membership site, a site where people are logging in and out, that price goes up quick. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, and you're I think you're exactly right. No, and matter of fact, in the proposal uh, that I give to a client, the price is contingent on them hosting the site with me. If, if they're going to host somewhere else, we're going to have a discussion about that. And It's usually a red flag with me that if the client is pushing their own hosting company, unless there's just a really good reason, it's usually a nickel and diming kind of reason, that's a red flag that I'm probably not going to want to work with that client. Uh, I'm looking for clients who want to host that I'm kind of their outsourced web guy. I'm, I'm the person they're bringing in to handle all this stuff so they can handle their stuff, right? Um, so, yeah, who's next? Wow, okay. I don't need to be next. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so, how do you maintain a bit of a balance if you're the support person or you're the first point of contact for a lot of it? How do you go on vacation or have a weekend off or that sort of thing? Great, great not? question. Yeah, vacation? What's that? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why I have sure. facilitated this. Sure. Okay. Um, how frequently do you have a real hosting oriented issue? Depends on your host. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. That's awesome. But clients think, you know, clients, yeah. if there's a problem, because there will be mistakes on it and done something. That's why you control the keys and you don't give the client access. Oh. There, there are very few reasons. That, I have no clients that have the keys to their cPanel. Are you kidding? Why would I give clients their own cPanel access? That's asking for trouble. That's like, you know, I've got, uh, when my daughter was five, here, go into this candy shop and I'll be back in 10 minutes. You know, are you kidding? They're going to get into everything. They're, what does this button do? You know, so, you know, there, there's a principle I create. It's, it's Nathan's rule of client entropy. Never underestimate the ability of a client to screw up their website. They find new and creative ways to do this. And so, yeah, I, I'm, so they don't have access to that. And I don't provide email support. Uh, email, I stopped providing email support because 80% or so of my inquiries were all about email. I don't want to deal with email. Are you kidding? They go to Google Apps now. Mm -hmm. So the only time that there's a hosting issue is if there's some massive catastrophic failure at the web host. Yeah. So, but to answer your question, all the first level issues, I have somebody that works with me that handles support requests. But, you know, and so you get to a point where you can't handle support anymore. Then you bring somebody in. And a, a VA is a great way to do that. They're pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Great presentation. Um, I struggle when it comes to packages you talked about, um, vetting resources, like say, for example, copywriter. Yeah. I prefer necessarily to refer them to the individual mm -hmm. rather than having them under my business. Sure. Then if anything goes wrong, they don't like the copywriter, then it's a reflection on me. So that's a 
struggle, if you could speak to mm -hmm. how to bring that in under the umbrella of your company without it being a bad reflection if your if your client's not happy with the person you vet. Fantastic. What's your name? Nadine. Nadine. Great question. Did you guys hear that over here? Yeah. Okay. So early on, I had a model that I, it was called strategic partnerships, right? And some of you guys may do this, where you have a copywriter and you have a videographer and you've got a logo person and you've got this, you know, and that's great. And you have maybe a set referral fee to those people and you can do that. The problem is you start to lose money in the recurring area. It's much easier if you're bringing it all in under your hat. Now, the other thing I would say is this. Those of us who are freelancers tend to be, we're very, we're very careful about our reputation and we should be, okay? Refer, all of my work comes by referral. And so, you know, it's, it's important that my name stays good. However, customer, eat, let's say the worst thing happened and you have a copywriter and they completely screwed up a project and it was just awful. The, the problem is not necessarily that problem, it's what you do next. It's how you respond to it. So even if the copywriter screws up, your client can differentiate you from your copywriter. And you just keep an open dialogue with the client of saying, look, I realized that was a problem, here's how we're gonna fix it. We'll bring somebody else in you know, and you find a new person. You do have to have the right people, and that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not an easy, quick process. You have to identify the right partners and resources. But when there's a problem, good grief. L the large web firms have problems. Everybody has problems. I mean, you've talked about Fortune 500 companies on the web. How much of their social traffic is complaints? Everybody complains about something. The problem is not the complaint. It's what you do after that. Yes, sir? Uh, pricing. Uh, I've been struggling. I've been lowering my pricing for my web hosting and maintenance because I deal with a lot of startups and they just, when I design a website for them, they're kind of, you know, sticker shock from the price I give them with that and then I say, okay, now you have to pay for web hosting. And then they're like, wow, I have to pay for this also. Yeah. And so I've been lowering my prices. I, I wanna, I'm wondering how do you charge more for your web hosting maintenance plans and still survive? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So nobody else in here has problems with pricing, right? <laughs> Seriously, and, and with, with all the freelancers I've coached and helped along, everybody struggles with pricing, everybody. The guy that says he hasn't struggled with pricing is lying to you, and he struggles with pricing too. Everybody struggles with it. I mean, I, I realized after a bid um, two weeks ago that I probably left $3,000 on the table. I'm constantly, we're all in this process of figuring out how to price our work. So don't feel bad about that. But let me say this. The key to selling, especially hosting, maintenance, the bread and butter package, the key to selling that is education. The client has to understand the value of a good host to this whole goal you're trying. So you're not selling a website. You're selling a package of services that help them have a presence on the web. A website is part of that, but ongoing backups, maintenance, a great host, that's all part of the deal. So from the very first co uh, communication I have with the client, over a consultation, I'm talking about you know who's going to be handling your website maintenance after this, you know, and talking about from that very first conversation, getting them used to the fact that we're going to provide these services. It's part of it. It goes in the proposal uh, along with the initial build. So they need to understand that pricing at the beginning. Education goes a long way. Yes, sir. I think I've got two quick points here. First off, I've known had the pleasure of knowing Nathan for about three years now. This concept of recurring revenue is a better term. It's called mailbox money. Mm -hmm. First of the month, you go to your mailbox and checks there, or better yet, it's in your uh, bank account because you're using Stripe. The second thing I want to tell you is, or ask Nathan to, to talk about his company or the company they represent, Pi Teams, because they have a fantastic uh, uh, internet based training videos that are online all the time. If you like Nathan Live now, you can get on your computer and go home tonight or before this weekend. And then Monday, he's doing a session on. So tell us about the seminars and how to get there and how to remember what you do. I didn't plan that, by the way. That's, <laughs> that was a, <laughs> Barry's a plant in the back. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I promise. Okay. So uh, I do teach at iThemes training. We do two or three webinars a week, sometimes more. Uh, WordPress developers course twice a year. It's like one ninety-seven a year, and you get all these live training. It's like WordCamp all year long really. Plus, there's 500 hours of training in the library of archives that you can get to on everything from business development stuff to core WordPress stuff to lots of different plugins. Uh, one of my favorite webinars I do every month is a plugin roundup where we look at 
all the plugins that were added in the WordPress repository in the last 30 days are updated. Uh, and I pick out the cool ones and the funny ones and the really bad ones. Uh, so those, anyway, so 35% off of that. I'm, so it's like what, 140 bucks for a year? Yeah. You know, 10, 12 dollars a month, and it's like WordCamp. Seriously, all year long, uh, there are two, three, four live webinars every week. So thanks, Barry. Okay, over here. Okay, yeah, great question. So did you guys hear that? How do you invoice recurring customers? Okay, uh, so the trick in this is, my whole world is about spending as little time in QuickBooks as I have to. You know, every process I have is about minimizing the admin stuff, because I hate it, can't stand it, and I forget it, and I put it off. Um, the best money I ever spent was hiring a bookkeeper that keeps my Stripe and my bank account and Amex and all that stuff straight, uh, because it'd be like eight months, and I'd be like, crap, I gotta do QuickBooks. Um, so how do you do it? On mine, I use Stripe. Stripe is fantastic. Uh, put the customer's credit card in there, it bills them, sends them an invoice uh, when their card's billed. All my billing's on the first of the month. It hits all at the same time, it's done. Yeah, simplicity. So when you're doing recurring stuff, and especially if you're a solopreneur, simplicity, it, it's worth something costing a little bit more if it saves you time on the back end. Oh. They, they do it themselves now. Hmm. The man with the great hat in the back. I was going to mention, uh, there's a company here that does white label support, uh, GoWP. Yes. You guys have to check them out. I don't, I'm not affiliated with them at all. I'm friends with the owner. But they're really great. It's really cheap monthly support, and it's completely white labeled. It's great. Yeah, so, seriously. Uh, that's, that's a great, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, go WP at the, it's Brad, right? Yeah, Brad. He's yeah. at the t-shirt table. You should go yeah. talk to him. Brad's, uh, yeah, the guy's t-shirt table. He's got glasses, kind of salt and pepper hair. He's with GoWP. You pay a flat monthly fee and you get X number of uh, support issues they'll solve for you. It's a really great way, especially when you're right on the verge of maybe I hire somebody, maybe I don't. That's a great way to take some of that pressure off when you start to grow. I think one more question and we're about out of time. What's the biggest thing at the level of business? Biggest change I've made. Most impactful thing that you can think of recently. Maybe that's included with reoccurring, maybe it's not, maybe just in general. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, personally, it's been adding coaching services because I'm, I'm backing off some of my client work to do to help freelancers, which is where my passion is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my, my, like my recurring, in, yeah, my recurring income. That's running pretty well now, so I'm focusing on something else. Cool. So I'm struggling with this point of, do I become, you know, am I going to step up a level and hire a bunch of people, or am I going to focus more on just what I want to do? It's a really tough decision. Sure. Yeah. Okay, one more, and we got to quit. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. One more. Yeah. One more question, and we're done. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's at the bottom of that. Uh, the the more of the boxy one. It's at the, in the fine print at the bottom. There's a link, yeah. Thank you, guys.